Yeah, good morning, YouTube. I've been running this uh, Raspberry Pi with the Open Elec version of Kodi. 36 minutes, according to the uptime. In the background, you can see a live TV program running. This is a broadcast in 1080i. And you can see down here, it's keeping the CPU pretty much pegged, 100%. If I run down here to the hardware settings, we've got a 1000 megahertz CPU speed, so I'm running the OpenELEC Turbo settings. CPU temperature is, seems to have stabilized at about 118. And right now the inside temperature in the house is 65, so we're looking like a 53 degree temperature rise. And I think that's pretty much stabilized. But this is just kind of shows you how you would want to run your temperature tests if you're contemplating overclocking your Raspberry Pi. This is, of course, like I mentioned, is the high speed. I'm at the 1000 megahertz, but ideally you would want to try this at 700, run it for a half hour to an hour, then run it. It's important that you keep the speed, the CPU speed pegged. I did this earlier with a 720p uh, TV signal or video and I only hit about a hundred and eight or 110 on the CPU temperature. It was still running at a thousand. The usage was like 88 percent instead of a hundred percent and that that's enough to make a difference. The other thing here I'll show you real quick. Yeah so here's my USB power monitor. This is coming out of the TV's USB ports so I'm still above 5 volts. I've got 380 milliamps it looks like and that's running at the thousand megahertz and 100% CPU usage and let me show you what happens here when I stop the TV program that'll slow the CPU back to 700. Okay, so I'm going to try to stop the uh, live TV playback. And you can see the power dropped quite a bit, dropped down to like 240 milliamps, so a 140 milliamp drop just by turning off the uh, live TV that shuts down the hardware codecs so all the hardware video decoding is stopped and then also the CPU speed is slowed down so I'll show you what that looks like yeah so here you can see I just shut it off uh, 30 seconds ago and already the CPU temperature is down to 106 it was 118 CPU speed dropped to 700 so I'm using the force turbo equal to zero mode which enables the dynamic overclock feature on the Raspberry Pi and there you can see the CPU temperature is continuing to drop I think it'll it, uh, if it's like before, it drops down to about 90 Fahrenheit. Under load, when I jump up to 1000 and max out the CPU, it, it climbs from 90 up to 118. So I guess that's what, 28 degrees hotter when I'm running at 1000 megahertz versus 700 megahertz. And then all the other settings, the uh, 800, 900, and 950 are, you know, someplace in between. So just to show you what the overclocking temperature performance looks like and how you would want to test your own system because this temperature that you see on your system will likely be different. I have the Blurk metal case which it has a a built-in heat sink and it seems to run quite cool it, it climbs up to 118 or that's 53 degrees above ambient temperature 
the maximum temperature on the Raspberry Pi is 70 centigrade, which is 158 Fahrenheit. So I'm 40 degrees below the maximum temperature, and if I allowed for like a hot summer night, maybe it's 85 degrees inside, then I'd be 20 degrees higher. That would run me up to 138, and I'd still be within the temperature margin on that processor. So, so just to give you a little idea how you might want to check your own uh, temperature and uh, yeah the big thing though is to make sure you've got a workload on the processor so that it's number one bumps the speed up to a higher frequency and then also you want to bump the CPU usage up to a hundred percent if you can and the only way I've found to do that is you you need a 1080 resolution video or a live TV seems to be the the best way to test that if you have a 1080i live TV program you can play that'll just peg it and you can see there it the trigger point must be in the 40% range because you can see the processor speed bumped back up to a thousand and we're running at like 40% usage right now so I don't know where exactly they have their speed dynamic overclocking see it dropped back down to 700 so that feature seems to work pretty good